Beetlejuice is back 36 years later with Tim Burton directing and Michael Keaton returning as the iconic striped-suited weirdo. Winona Ryder's also back as a grown-up Lydia Dietz, and Jenna Ortega joins the cast as her angst-filled teenage daughter, Astrid. Tim Burton's wild imagination is in full force here. The practical effects totally match the original. They're gross, slimy, squishy, and just disturbing enough. I honestly thought they were going to overkill the CGI, but there's just enough to keep the vibe intact. The makeup, costumes, animatronics, and puppets bring everything to life in a pleasing way. Oh, and they're really pushing that PG-13 rating. Kids, you might be a little creeped out watching this. Now, Keaton's Beetlejuice feels less like a menace and more like your weird uncle who can't kick his bad habits. But he's still got the freaking juice. He's wild, unpredictable, and having way too much fun with his role. Now, you know, when making a sequel, it's easy to just overload fans with more of the character they've loved for decades. But this film smartly keeps Beetlejuice's screen time in check, giving him just a bit more than the first. And whenever he appears, he totally livens things up. Lydia is now a troubled adult running a paranormal TV show, which is suiting for her character. She's grown from a goth teen to someone with real life issues. Her bond with Jenna Ortega's Astrid gives the film its emotional beat. And of course, Ortega slides perfectly into Tim Burton's world obviously. She gives Astrid a sarcastic vibe that kind of channels Lydia's old school skepticism. But her character feels poorly written, unoriginal, and uninspiring. Now, Ortega's performance is perfectly fine, but the choices her character makes totally contradict what she stood for at the start. All just to push a forced and cringeworthy romance that feels like a lazy plot device. I'm guessing the writers thought everyone likes her as this type of character, so let's just make her do that thing. Justin Thoreau plays Lydia's manager, and he's got this creepy, off-putting vibe. He clearly has a thing for her but you can tell he's trying to worm his way deeper into her life and it's unsettling in all the right ways. For me, Catherine O'Hara steals every scene. She's now your stereotypical tortured artist, but the twist is everyone is terrified of her because she's just that miserable to be around. The plot kind of drifts around like a lost ghost, not sure where to settle. It throws in some deep stuff, you know, family, loss, grief and trauma, and the afterlife bureaucracy. But all that gets buried trying to balance too many storylines and characters, which is this movie's biggest flaw. I mean, a lot is happening, which makes it feel all over the damn place. Like Beetlejuice's bizarre bizarre marital drama with Monica Belushi. Her character has an A-plus introduction, but as the story goes on, she does less and less. It quickly becomes clear she's not important to the narrative, making the initial focus on her feel pretty pointless. But then you have Willem Dafoe's afterlife detective that is a fun poke at actors. I mean, a spin-off of his character wouldn't be a bad idea. Burton's die-hard commitment to his aesthetic is undeniable and where the film shines. I still loved being back in this quirky world. It's bigger in scope, especially when exploring the afterlife more than the first film. Beetlejuice Beetlejuice captures the fun of the original, but the plot is stretched too thin. The extra characters and storylines make it feel a bit bloated and unfocused at times. There is some fun to be had here. 